Stop scrolling for a second. What if your next battery didn't come from dirty mines, didn't catch fire easily, and could charge to 80% in about five minutes? Today, we're looking at IBM's plan to use quantum computing to speed up battery discovery, and why Mercedes-Benz and its parent company Daimler have been paying attention. We'll break down IBM's heavy metal-free battery idea, the bold performance claims, the partners working on prototypes, and the big question nobody can ignore. Is this a real path to better batteries, or just hype with a fancy computer behind it? Let's test it together. The Big Battery Bottleneck Batteries are the quiet hero of decarbonization. They sit inside electric cars, buses, and bikes, and they also sit behind the scenes on the power grid. When wind and solar make more electricity than we need, batteries can soak it up. When clouds roll in or the sun goes down, batteries can push power back out. But the battery world we have today still feels like a compromise. Lithium-ion cells have improved a lot. A decade ago, a small gadget might barely last the day. Now we have cars that can travel hundreds of miles on one charge. Still, the big goals are tougher. We want a charging that feels as quick as a fuel stop. We want safer packs that resist overheating. We want long life for grid storage, where a battery may cycle every day for years. And we want materials that are cheap, stable, and ethically sourced, not tied to dangerous extraction or fragile supply chains. That is why every new battery announcement creates a wave of excitement. The promise is simple. One leap in chemistry could unlock cleaner transport and a cleaner grid. The reality is also simple. Chemistry is hard, and scale is brutal. A lab cell is not a factory product. So when a company like IBM steps in, not as a car maker, but as a computing and research giant, it raises a different kind of question. Can better computation speed up better materials? IBM's seawater battery claim. IBM Research drew attention when it described a new battery chemistry that avoids heavy metals like cobalt and nickel. Instead of relying on those mined materials, IBM said key ingredients could be extracted from seawater. The team also said the cell combines three proprietary materials that had not been used together this way before. IBM did not share the full formula, which became part of the controversy, but the goal was clear. Make batteries that are cleaner, cheaper, and easier to scale. The format also mattered. The first big reveal came through IBM's own blog, rather than a peer-reviewed paper. That does not mean the chemistry is wrong, but it changes how the claim should be read. A blog post can describe promising lab work, while a paper usually forces deeper detail and outside review. In battery science, those details are everything. A result can look amazing in one test setup and fall apart in another. IBM's wording suggested a flexible platform. The same chemistry could be tuned toward lower cost, faster charging, higher power, higher energy density, strong efficiency, and lower flammability, depending on what you optimize for. That matters because a phone battery, a car battery, and a grid battery have different priorities. So the claim was less one perfect battery, and more a new set of ingredients that might open new design space. The numbers that turn heads. IBM's biggest headline is charging speed. In lab tests, the company said a high power setup could reach an 80% state of charge in under five minutes. That instantly sounds like a fuel stop. IBM also leaned on safety. The design uses a liquid electrolyte with a high flash point, meaning it is harder to ignite than many common electrolytes. The team said this electrolyte and cathode mix can also help suppress lithium metal dendrites. Those needle-like growths can cause shorts and failures, so controlling them is a big deal. Then there is power. IBM said the chemistry can be tuned for very high power density, above 10,000 watts per liter. That matters for tools and for concepts like electric aircraft, where you may need huge bursts during takeoff. Energy density was part of the pitch too, with a claim above 800 watt hours per liter, roughly comparable to advanced lithium ion. IBM also mentioned energy efficiency above 90% and low flammability. One detail keeps this grounded. 
IBM framed these as knobs you can turn, not one perfect cell that wins every category at once. Fast charge, long life, and peak power often fight each other. For grid storage, the target is stable cycling for years, and IBM said that it is still being tested. Partners, prototypes, and the skeptics' view. IBM backed the claim with partners. Mercedes-Benz Research and Development North America joined the effort, along with Central Glass in Japan, a major supplier of battery electrolyte materials. IBM also named a Silicon Valley battery company, Sidus, to help test and build cells. And IBM said it had already made prototype pouch cells in its lab, which is a step beyond a tiny coin cell demo. Still, skepticism showed up fast. When IE Spectrum covered the announcement, it pointed out how little technical detail was public. MIT materials scientist Donald Sadaway called the promised specs staggering, but also said there was no solid basis to confirm or deny them without data. That is the core tension. A company wants to protect trade secrets, but engineers also need evidence charge rates, temperatures, cycle life curves, and failure tests. IBM's own timeline was more cautious than many headlines. The team suggested a limited product could arrive within one to two years for narrow uses, like portable power tools. Beating standard lithium ion in full electric cars would take longer. So for now, the honest summary is simple. Promising chemistry, early prototypes, serious partners, and a lot left to prove. Where quantum computing fits in. Battery chemistry happens at the scale of electrons, so modeling it is painfully hard. Even powerful classical computers struggle as molecules get larger, because the number of quantum states explodes. Researchers simplify, but simplifications can hide the exact reaction that ruins a battery after a few hundred cycles. This is where IBM brings its special tool. Quantum computers are built to represent quantum behavior directly. They are not magic, and today's machines are still small and noisy, but the long-term promise is clear, better molecular simulation. IBM and Daimler explored that promise by studying three lithium-containing molecules linked to lithium-sulfur battery chemistry. They used an IBM quantum computer to calculate an important property, the dipole moment, and compared it with classical methods. The result was framed as a proof of concept, not a finished battery. IBM has even shown this idea in public demos, including presentations around the Consumer Electronics Show to illustrate how quantum workflows might guide next-gen battery design. The takeaway is not that today's quantum chips can design a commercial cell overnight. It is that the advantage should grow as processors get larger and error rates drop, so the simulations become less toy-sized and more chemically realistic. So when IBM talks about designing better or even solid-state batteries with quantum tech, it is really talking about speeding up discovery. Solid-state batteries swap the usual flammable liquid electrolyte for a solid one, which can improve safety and sometimes energy density. But finding a solid that conducts ions fast, stays stable, and survives years of cycling is tough. If quantum simulation helps screen materials and predict problems earlier, it can reduce the expensive trial and error in the lab. What to watch next? Here's how to think about this without falling for hype or dismissing it too quickly. IBM is betting on two things at once. New chemistry that avoids cobalt and nickel, and new computation that makes materials discovery faster. Even if one specific battery does not become the winner, the search tools can still reshape the field. But the next steps are very concrete. First is independent validation, or at least richer public test data. Fast charging is impressive, but it must be shown with clear conditions. The charge rate, temperature, and how the cell ages. Second is the cycle life under stress. Does the battery still hold strong capacity after hundreds of aggressive charges? Third is real-world safety testing, not just a promise of low flammability. Fourth is manufacturing reality. Can the materials be produced consistently, and can costs stay low at scale? IBM mentioned seawater as a source, but extracting large amounts of useful compounds from the ocean would require new industrial processes. One more signal matters most. Hardware, not headlines. Look for prototype cells, 
published performance curves, and products that people can actually buy. Until those appear, it is fair to be excited by the direction, and cautious about the timeline. Because in batteries, the hardest part is rarely the first result. It is making the result repeatable, safe, and mass manufacturable. And that's the real story. IBM isn't selling a single miracle battery. It's trying to change how batteries get discovered. A chemistry that avoids cobalt and nickel, charges fast, and stays safer would be huge for cars, tools, planes, and the grid. Quantum computing could help researchers see the molecular puzzle pieces sooner before spending years in the lab. But the proof will be in test data and products. So what do you think? Is this the start of a battery breakthrough or another round of hopeful headlines? Drop your take in the comments and I'll see you next time.